quantum mechanics, which is the science of the very, very small, uh, when we're dealing with individual electrons, individual photons, which is like a single particle of light. And um, the amazing thing that was discovered in the early 20th century when uh, researchers like Niels Bohr um, in, in Copenhagen, Denmark, uh, you know, began to um, uh, work on this science. One of the things that was discovered very early on was that um, um, conscious observation uh, appears to influence the behavior of these subatomic particles. Mm -hmm. And this is mind blowing and it was unanticipated and it was really resisted. Okay. So, um, everybody, when, when we talk about quantum mechanics, most folks, you know, go first to a famous experiment that was first done in the early 20th century called the double slit experiment. Researchers decided to, um, shoot photons through two slits okay. in a barrier. Okay. And uh, what they expected was, you know, photons, which they imagined to be particles, okay, okay are going to be shot through the slit. And so, so you've got, so you've got like a photon shooter for like yeah, a better you've got word. A photon shooter, <laughs> and right? You're trying, and what are they trying to do? Shoot it through one slit and then shoot yeah, it through the other, right? And, and you know, there's a great animation of this on YouTube. Uh, I think it's called Doctor Quantum. Okay. Um, and, uh, you know, we can put the link in the, in sure. the program notes and, and folks can and look at it. But it, it does a great job. And I, I think it's one of the best heuristic devices to kind of understand this. But yes, absolutely. So in the in the animation, that's precisely what they do. They've got a photon shooter here, uh -huh. just to think about simply. And you've got a barrier with two slits in it. And then you've got a screen behind the barrier that's going to receive the impression of the photon. Okay. It's going to be hit yeah. by it. So you shoot the photons at the two slits, and the expectation was that uh, you get two slits on the screen yeah. from where the where photons the, hit them. Where the photons hit them, that's not what they got. Instead, they got what's called an interference pattern, which is a series of bands that you get when two waves uh, interfere with each other when they're coming from two sources. Um, so if you have, for example, if, if you have a basin of water and you put two vibrating objects in, onto the surface of the water that are creating waves, uh, so you got waves emanating from two sources, the waves come together mm -hmm. and where, they, where their crests meet, you get mm. a high amplitude of double the amplitude and, and where their crest and trough meets, they cancel itself out and you get nothing. And then if you put a screen on the other side and allow the waves to hit, uh, you get a, a classic pattern that uh, scientists recognize uh, usually immediately, which is a kind of a, a characteristic series of bands that, that represents an interference pattern, uh, a light band and a dark band, a light band and a dark band. And that's from the waves uh, either... Um, uh, combining to increase their amplitude or to cancel it out. So these uh, quantum mechanics, you know, you know, these scientists working on, you know, the, the science of the very small, they, they shoot the photons through the two uh, slits and they get a wave pattern on the other side. The, the two slits would create and would be expected to create an interference pattern uh, if you were sending a wave through but not if you're sending a particle through. Okay, so we're kind of learning about the properties of light. So, so the pattern that, that comes on the, uh, on the screen from shooting photons through the two slits uh, suggests that the photon is acting like a wave. And that's counterintuitive because it was thought that, you know, a photon was just this little particle of light, a, a single quantum, a single unit of light. Um, so, they, so they decided to watch, let's, let's, let's put a, an observational mechanism right at the slits and kind of observe the photons mm -hmm. coming through and see if we can figure out what happens. And they found that when they did that, when they observed the photons, even through an instrument, uh, it's not like with the naked eye, right. but, but through instrumentation, basically creating a, a knowledge path, a knowledge path from the behavior of the photon to their mind, um, 
Then the photon stopped acting like a wave and started acting like a particle. And you got the two. What? Yeah, yeah, yeah. You get the two slits on the screen. That, that showed the impression of two photons. Yeah. Once of, it was of, observed. Well, they shoot many photons. And, okay. and on the other side, you get you get two strips Sorry, as if yeah, you had shot yeah, bullets. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah. Like, like a, you. Like a, uh, so you're uh, saying that when they shot the photons, and people are going to be watching this, and they already know this, but this is blowing my mind. So it turns out Big Bang Theory didn't educate me sufficiently. So you're saying when they shoot the protons through the two... Fot sorry, sorry, protons, thank you, thank that's you. Okay. Photons through the two slits without an, uh, a mechanism to observe it, right. it appeared as a wave, whatever right. the hell that is. Yeah. But when they shot the photons yes. through the double slits and right. had a mechanism that did observe it... Right, they behave like particles. They behave like photons. Yeah, like 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 photons like, were expected to believe, like like particles of what the of light. hell is that? Yes, yeah. Well, excuse that's, my that's, language, but that's, what does that? That's mean? been the question ever since, and I, I think uh, the doc the Doctor Quantum videos that I recommend people watch on this. I think it's part of a larger video that's called uh, like something like "What the Bleep is Going On?" You know, uh, so this is mysterious. So because now, yeah. ah. Because so it's, it's showing us that that reality is much weirder that we, yeah, than we think. You're not kidding. In fact, I think it's Werner Heisenberg. You know, people may have heard of the Heisenberg uncertainty principle yeah. and stuff like that. But very famous quantum uh, physicist. Uh, I think he said at one point that not only is nature weirder than we think, it's weirder than we can think. <laughs> but okay, so I understand that the photon is not accessible to the naked eye. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But what happened if they tried to observe between the slits and the screen? I mean, why wouldn't it behave like a photon at that point? Why did it need a specific um, uh, whatever it was that, 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 that picked it up right. for it well, to, to act like a well, particle? Basi basically, um, it, uh, in both instances, something's observing it. You've got right. a human or you've got a camera. Right. Yeah. So um, the okay the the screen uh, at the back. You know they're shooting the photons through the slits. Okay, to the screen at the back, and this the screen is just picking up the energy. Okay, that mm -hmm. from from the photons that are being shot, and uh, again when when the path. Okay, when the path of the photons was not being scrutinized. Yeah. Okay. I see. You're like you're looking away, you're not keeping track yeah. of the information in the past. That's when it acted like a wave. Then it acts like a wave. But what I'm saying is, what if the human tried to tried to see it between right. the slits and the screen? He can't. I understand he can't, but there's right. still an observer there. Right. Well, if if who's not observing because right. he can't if, see. If but, you if you were able to observe, it would behave as a particle. Jiminy okay? Cricket. But, but basically what they found, they, they played with this experiment, tried to do everything they could. They thought, oh, there must be something else causing it. But all the different ways that they would set up the experiment, what they discovered is whenever there was a, an, excuse me if I use the language of philosophy, but in planning, uh, you know, he's an epistemologist, mm -hmm. right? So whenever there was an epistemological chain yes. between, between the behavior of the particle to the, the, knower. To the knower, then it would behave as a particle. And whenever you smeared that out or, or either destroyed or didn't record or didn't look or didn't observe or whatever, so that there was no epistemological chain between the particle and the knower, then it would behave as a wave. So if you put a camera that wasn't sophisticated enough to detect it, so it's still right. being viewed. It's not going to, it's not going to do it. Crikey. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It, it is pretty crazy stuff. It's pretty crazy stuff. And, and you know, here's a good time for me to, to, to appeal to people who know this stuff much better. Wow. But I recommend the works of Henry P. Stop. Okay. okay. Stop worked with Wolfgang Pauli and Werner Heisenberg. Uh, now someone under them. Keep going. And, and, and these are famous guys. You know, folks that, you know, know the field will recognize that those are famous guys. And Stop worked right under them. And, and Stop has written popular books on this. This is called Mindful Universe, Quantum Mechanics and the Participating Observer. Mm. And, and basically what, what Stop argues, and he knows many of the original players in, in the development see? of this field. Yeah, I'll read it you while know. you're talking. Yeah, <laughs> so it's, it's, a, it's a quite a, a book to swallow. But what Stop uh, argues there is, is he says, look, the, the, original, the original researchers that established the field of quantum mechanics, and they're generally called the Copenhagen School, 
Okay. okay. Because they, they are all associated with Niels Bohr and his lab in, in Copenhagen, Denmark, and so on. Um, but there's the one that set up the, the formulas. And these formulas do work. Like you can do the math and you can predict, you can do statistical predictions about the behaviors of these subatomic particles. But the interesting thing about the behavior of these subatomic particles is their behavior is influenced by the decisions of the observer. So what, what and how the observer decides to observe is going to, it, it, it doesn't like make just anything happen, <laughs> right? But it does decide within a narrow possibility of, of occurrences, which of those is actually manifest. So in other words, the, the experimenter is influencing the behavior of matter and energy. And the experimenter is part of the equations. And this is mind blowing because up until, up until the, the discovery of quantum mechanics, we were dealing with what's now called a Newtonian or a classical view of reality, mm -hmm. which is that, you know, um, all of reality goes down to fundamental particles, atoms or whatever. And, and they're like, they behave like billiard balls, um, bouncing around and striking one another. And, and, and that's all there is, essentially. That's all what matter reduces. And so if you knew the, um, the mass mm -hmm. and the momentum and the vector of every single particle, you could, you could predict uh, the future, and it's all deterministic, yeah. right? That's so, how free will sounds like it's explained by materialists. If we just had all the info, we would know what you were going to do. We would know, right, exactly. And so, and so that view of the universe, that's, that's often called a Newtonian view of the universe, or and now it's called a classical view because it's a pre-quantum uh, view, okay, does lend itself to material determinism. And, and the funny thing is, even though it's, it's 100 years since quantum mechanics was developed, you still find probably most philosophers as well as natural scientists looking at the world through a classical lens, hmm. uh, through a lens where you know material causality is is determined, yep. and and so you don't need any ghosts in the machine, and there's nothing for mind to do, there's yep, nothing yep. for God to do, etc. <clears throat> and that's a false view. As, as Stop uh, show, uh, emphasizes time and again. That mechanically deterministic view of the universe has been disproven by quantum mechanics. Actually, and, and Heisenberg, you know, under whom Stop worked, Heisenberg is famous for what what's called his uncertainty principle, mm -hmm. that you you don't know uh, the uh, the behavior of these um, subatomic particles. You you can't know both. Uh, I mean, technically, I think uh, Heisenberg's uh, uncertainty principle is you can't know both the, uh, the I think it's the, the momentum and the position of a particle at the same time. Um, uh, something, the specifics of it are, are, are kind of inconsequential, but there's, there's a, an inability to, for us to know everything about uh, these fundamental particles. Mm -hmm. um, can't be known, and, and, and to a certain extent, uh, oftentimes uh, it's not known because they exist as waves of potentiality, and until they are observed, wow. they, uh, they won't take a single location, okay? But when they are observed, when you create an epistemological link between the particle and the, the knower, the consciousness, what happens is what's called the collapse of the wave function, this this realm of possibilities will collapse onto a single possibility. Hey, thank you so much for watching. Before you go, do us a favor, leave a comment, let us know what you thought of the video, like, and subscribe.